five server changes coming probably this Wednesday in two days from now. Today's September 18th, two days from now, September 20th. We should be having these changes. So this is different from the PTR changes. And this is a precursor of what's to come. See, later this week, published on 18th of September. You can find this yourself by typing exclamation mark patch in the chat. So let's take a look at it together. As always, I do a little prediction about what I think is going to be changing with the heroes. And then we'll see whether it's correct. And it's a little mini game. Cassia, I would say buff. Chromie buff. Kel'Thuzad nerf. Maybe a buff, a buff and a nerf. To kind of rebalance out his tree. Butcher. I don't know. I haven't seen him much. So I would say buff, but I'm not sure. Thrall, maybe buff. Brightwing nerf maybe i don't know or change morales nerf maybe stuk of nerf Toronto nerf chen buff dahaka nerf garrosh nerf leoric nerf okay let's see if it's true cassia buff it was true it was true buff more damage more damage more damage no more true side less extra blinds it's time to do the Q build. They made the quest easier to complete. And a tiny surprise as well. Cast range of time trap. Only about 40% of Chromie players were unlocking the echo over the course of a game. And among players that did it, it was occurring later than we'd like. Frost Nova, mana cost increase. Chains of Kel'Thuzad, mana cost increase. Frost Blast, cooldown decrease. Good changes so far. Because his spells do feel very spammable. I like this. I mean, look at Kel'Thas. If you don't take mana addict, Kel'Thas is out of Ohm in like 15 seconds. And Kel'Thuzad could spam like Chromie. Shadow Fisher, less damage, more cooldown, more mana, good changes, good, very good. Ah, making use of the phylactery, I see. Ten to twelve. So here's my here's my opinion on phylactery. I have played around a bit with uh, Kel'Thuzad. Cassia has a nerf. Yeah, of course it's a nerf to her uh, Seraph's him. Uh, here's how I view it. Whether it's 10 or 12 globes, the way that I see this, you should never use the activatable. Period. You just use it for 10% lifesteal on your mana. And you only use the activatable if it's a game-winning court defense. That's it. Anytime I used it, it's very difficult to get the 10 globes again in the mid to late game. So you should almost not see the active element as uh, as an element. For those of you who don't know Kel'Thuzad yet, if you press it, you instantly revive. But you lose your 10 globes, so you no longer have the 10% lifesteal. I don't think it's the worst level 4. I don't think it's dead, dead to right it's the best level 4. But that's how I think it should be used. And only if the core is about to die, you re you revive yourself. You don't do it just to get to a tribute faster. Making it on 12 doesn't really change my view of the core functionality of it. And I think it's fine. 10 or 12 clubs isn't that hard to get. I don't have too strong of an opinion about it. Accelerated Decay. More bonus damage on each extra tick of the queue. I believe I find this was the worst level 7, so I don't mind the buff in it. Especially since he has received nerfs across the board in his base kit. Glacial Spike does far less damage, reducing the power of his one shot. And also, it will be harder to combo with it and easier to dodge for the opponent. The delay was already important to you cast the spike. And if you immediately did the change, the chains of Kel'Thuzad, 
you would miss it because it didn't spawn yet. That will be a more difficult problem now. This was the strongest level 13. Even if you missed your Nova, they were still so slow because of this that after you chain combo someone, your alt was still very likely to hit. A little bit less slow for a less long period. I think that's fair. But I think the other level 13s are not very strong. So I feel partially people were taking it because it was the, the best one. A little bit less bonus damage after you Frost Nova, people. This was the second best or the best. The other one being Spell Power. And uh, there was one more that, that increases... That decreases the cooldown of your death and decay, your Q. I think that's the worst. At least I think with what little I know right now. Yeah. His win rate has climbed more and more. Yeah, because he's he started at a pretty low win rate. And so it's gotten better and better as people got better. That makes sense. We like the sharpness of his power spike due to Master of the Cold Dark. I believe his win rate will still keep climbing despite these nerfs. This one may actually mean you want a different level 7. I'm just going to take a quick look at his level 7s. The others are Chilling Touch, which was that every 8 seconds his basic attack hits uh, a splash spell damage that also slows. And you have that accelerated decay. Glacial Spike still gives you combo ability that may still make it the best, but it's a pretty significant nerf. Very significant nerf, actually. Like, at later levels this will be like 300 damage, and then it gets amplified by your Master of the Cold Dark, so it was adding like 500 plus damage. Oh yeah, the auto attack is double. Wait, does it? No, it's not double. Oh yeah, it's it's 75% extra damage to the auto attack at level 7 as well, due to his quest. I think Glacial Spike will still be a competitive choice. Because of the utility. I mean, let's look at it. It's, it's a movement blocker. It is a, a combo ability on a single hero when there's no other heroes around. It damages. Does it slow as well? No. Okay. Moving on to Butcher. More basic attack damage. More healing health scaling per level. Wow. That makes him a little bit better late game at, at taking damage. Well, like I said... Um, well, like I said... <laughs> like, I, like I thought he will get some buffs. It's true. Significant drop in win rate. Because they gave him some meat nerfs. Thrall. More basic health. Yay. For the horde. Ah, oh, that's... That's a war cry that I can get behind. I like Thrall. Um, but how much is it really? 13. 89. 89 over 1800. So 90 over 1800. About 4-5%. Decent. Smaller changes have been made to greater effect. About 5%, huh? Soothing Mist. Range increased by 1. Blink heal reduction, 1 second. Wow, a lot of changes. So this is two buffs. Dream Shot. Oh, no more unfurling spray. Huh. Dream Shot. Increase the range of Arcane Flare. And if you hit the center, there's a one second CDR. So before she had one second on the outside and a three second CDR on the inside. Now it's only one on the inside. And it also combined the artillery talent at level four. It made two out of one, but much weaker CDR component. Even more mobile with the global from the hyper shifts. Which was already very good. 
So this one, as I said, has been combined into Dream Shot. Oh, two one second. So they gave it the Morales grenade treatment. Read spammy chat. Yes, thank you for the spam. It 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 <laughs> called my attention. That's pretty busted. Peekaboo. So I thought Brightwing was gonna get nerfed because I feel like she's very strong, but uh, she's actually getting buffs, isn't she? Buff, 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 nerf. Peekaboo. Smaller radius. And it also gives pixie dust on the one that you fly on. Oh, -ho. shielding herself as well. I mean, you remove this and the other level fours are not good. The manic pixie and the uh, unstable anomaly. You pick them because it's like, eh, whatever, I'll pick those, I guess. This one is buffed. This one is buffed. And this one is buffed. I don't see why they even add this one. It's just gonna be ZZZ. Z, Z. Low hanging fruit, gachi gasm. All right, wanted to trim, I know what you mean. Granting her a slightly larger range of soothing mists. Huh. I think it's going to be 95 plus percent uh, Z build and occasionally fight wing, but not much. That's what I think. Wow, really? How are we going to focus Morales? Five, 5% or 4% healing uh, health increase. Energy regeneration cooldown reduced from three to two. Energy regeneration cooldown. That means you start healing energy after two seconds instead of after three, right? You can no longer redirect healing beam to a target that's already being healed by your healing beam. Oh, that's good. That That's almost like a bug. I don't know why she's getting buffed. I, I lost to Morales on Braxis holdout, sample size one, and it looked like she never ran out of mana on account of not having any. And that felt pretty frustrating to deal with. And she's seeing pro play, and now she's getting buffed across the board. I've heard a lot of noises on Reddit and, and, and Twitch chat where people said that uh, Morales is weaker now post rework than she was but i feel like she's stronger and she's getting some buffs now so i think uh i think the little medic is gonna run rampant in the nexus but we'll see right we can always uh counter draft her a little bit more and uh give her a little bit more respect these changes will force us to i mean it's not like morales has ever been the dominant support when you look at uh, Uther, Rhaegar, Stukov, Ariel, uh, Karazim, they've all had their moments where they were the best. Now it's time for Lieutenant Morales reporting. Leave no allies behind. Fly my medivac into enemy mosh pit with all my allies inside. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of chances for them to mess up. Caduceus feedback also increases basic attack range, but only generates energy from basic attacks against heroes. Okay, cool. Because this was a uh, popular talent. I saw this was the one that Bakery was picking uh, in the HTC match against, uh, I believe, Fnatic. So you can no longer generate from minions. Ah, the talent that almost didn't see any play. Half this damage when you go range and with a slow. Definitely outcompeted by the lingering arm the lurking arm i should say expanding area now still maintains 70 percent of his damage instead of 50. 
while getting a ranged slowing attack, much like Gauls level 20. I think this makes it this makes it a competitive choice. But I still feel like the whole lurking arm expanding area is far and away the most powerful part of the entire Stukov kit that I feel like they might as well remove that talent, add it as a baseline to his basic ability and slightly weaken it so that there's always an element of there is an area of silence that gets slightly bigger, maybe this big. Whereas now it's like, it's always like this, but if you pick it, it's like this. Maybe this is the sweet spot as a base, and then you can have different level one choices because I do feel like it's still the strongest despite the downside of CDR, of a cooldown increase. But still, this could be an interesting choice. But the meaty melee slaps are pretty nice too. Taronda, super strong right now, I feel like. From everywhere of platinum and above. Nerf to her and power, giving her much less owl stacks. Before, if she hit three targets, she could pretty much shoot one right away again. Two second cooldown. That will no longer be the case. And this will definitely reduce her power. Her wave clear is still weak as always, so she will get more punished on her weaknesses. And she's a little bit less strong in that aspect. A pity for the Tyrandus that enjoy playing her so much. It is very fun to spam owls all the time. And I was looking forward to abusing it myself. But her win rates have been on the rise. She's seeing high level and mid level hero league play a lot. And she can be pretty hard to kill with the right talent set. With the spell shield, the self heal at 16, the damage reduction of the opponent at 20 with the increased attack speed. Mount speed on heroic with cloak. The range of Hunter's Mark. So you can cast it from further away. Alright. This is a pretty big nerf, so I'm happy with it. What happened to Chen? No more grounding brew, which was the spell power drink. But as soon as his drink was interrupted, no more spell resistance. It was a spell resistance drink. Purifying brew at 7, which was brought down from 20, I believe. Has had its cooldown reduced back from 45 to 15. I think it was 10 seconds at 20. And they also baked in grounding brew. We realize how difficult it is for Chen. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, there's more. Players to pass up Brewmaster's balance on tier 3. We moved a powerful 20 down to compete, but it's still an underperformer. <laughs> okay. Please consider this one compared to Brew Balance. Alright. I'll consider it next time I play Chen in 2018. <laughs> Dahaka. Basic attack damage reduced. He does have very high basic attack damage, by the way. Less Dark Swarm damage. Nerfs and nerfs. Small ones, still significant. And I, I think it's good. He, uh, you know, on my tier list, which I would say arguably is the best tier list in the world. You can find it on robograb.com slash tier list. Again, arguably, so don't blow a casket. He's tier S. I have him as tier S. I don't think it's the best tier list in the world, just... You know, a lot of people have told me, they're like, I'm so grateful for your tier list. It's so good. I think it's the best. Personally, I don't think so. Uh, it's just a list. It's certainly no Bible. But, you know, if people tell me, who am I to to argue with it? But yeah, he's tier S there. So might have to reevaluate that a little bit. It's blow a gasket? Really? When are you going to update it? I updated it very recently. Blow a gasket? Really? What's a gasket? Gasket. A gasket is a shaped piece or ring of rubber. 
or other material sealing the junction between two surfaces in an engine or other device. Now, what's a casket? A small ornamental box holding jewels. <laughs> okay. So it's it's blowing an O-ring rubber off rather than blowing a jewel box open. It's got pretty uh <laughs> gasket chasm. Okay, Garrosh. Mana cost increased on Q, increased on Wrecking Ball, and decreased on Decimate. Body check. Reduced cooldown. So what they're saying, it's it's too spammable. His combo is too spammable. I think that's a fair evaluation. He doesn't have a lot of mana issues. Certainly when you compare Garrosh to Tyrael, Tyrael takes the crown, doesn't he? With mana consumption. Because old heroes, new heroes, yada yada yada. So I think that's fair. Body check. I personally use it the least. I think that's fair. I don't see other people take it a lot either. Can't throw allies as often. These changes are a response to Reddit. We don't think it's a good idea. However, we agreed, we agreed with Reddit. Well, let's see. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. <laughs> and two cooldown reduced back to 60. Having said that, I do think it's fair changes, probably. Everyone needs to be like Tyrion. I don't know. Anyway. So that was the changes that were, are going to be coming to the Nexus in about two days from now, probably. Of course, Antum is still te 10 seconds more than it was pre-rework when it was 50. Yeah. I could no longer see when Alarak was casting Counter-Strike. Now we can see it again. Wow. That was kind of strong then. I didn't know this. We can still use this for two days. Not protected from my damage, by the way. Ha ha. Hey, in terms of fixing sound bugs, could they stop blowing out my eardrums when Illidan hunts on someone? It doesn't follow my volume rules. That would be nice. I would like my eardrums back, please. So that was the patch that's going to be coming up. It's at range. You can hit structures for less damage, heroes for some damage, or heal allies for a lot. And you can't move during it. The ghost whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh. 